how's it going? I'm Ida Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so last time we started this little two-parter uh, talking about health. By talking about physical health, and I kind of came to the conclusion that I haven't really explored it that much um, within my writing yet. Um, I've sort of explored the sort of disability angle uh, a few times and I've started exploring a few other things as well, um, but mostly I haven't really tackled it all that well. I also mentioned that I am more than aware that mental and physical health can be interrelated um, things, um, and certainly talking covering um, emotional health, which is, again, something that is very interrelated to, to all these things. And, and you know, it, it all, you know, we, we as human beings are, uh, want a better term, complete machines that work and, and function as a complete unit. Um, so things that, you know, affect our mental health can affect our physical health, can affect our emotional health. Um, so it's all sort of interconnected. It's all sort of part of the, of the same sort of uh, the way that our body works. And you know, one of the things I said last week is one of the things I try to do um, when I am talking about a character which which does suffer from a particular condition is I try not to name what that condition is um, because we as individuals have uh, our own individual experience with the conditions that we suffer from and. Um, two people with the exact same condition aren't going to have the exact same experience with that condition, um, even if they have similar symptoms or similar medication, because we as in individuals um, experience the world as individuals. So something that sort of impacts me in one way is going to impact somebody else in a completely different way. Um, so yeah, most, most of last week's one on, on physical health was kind of just summing up health in general, um, I guess. Um, but as I said, part of that is because I haven't necessarily explored that side of things quite as much. Um, but in terms of, of mental health and emotional health of my characters, that is something that does definitely crop up um, quite a lot. Um, both in sort of like sort of extremities and, and in sort of subtle ways as well. And I think the reason um, the reason I've almost found it sort of easier to deal with the sort of the mental and emotional health of my characters side of things is because that has a greater impact on the characters that I'm writing because it's about their experience of the world. Yes, things that impact your physical health do definitely impact the way you experience the world around you and the way you um, deal with the world around you. But the way you process that and, and the things that you feel about that, that kind of makes the story and that's, that's the kind of the, the way you experience um, the, the story of your life <laughs> and how my, my characters are experiencing their stories is how is through their perception of what's going on. And, that is affected by their mental health and through how they feel about what's going on, which is affected by their emotional health. And yes, that can be impacted by the stuff that's going on in their physical health, but more often than not, that's not the side of things I'm focused on. I'm focused on, you know, how they're interpreting the world and how they're viewing the world. So I've definitely dealt with characters with uh, depression more than once and um, anxiety tends to come up uh, more than once. I muted characters um which you could, you could kind of argue that particular situation it was kind of a bit of both uh both physical and emotional and and um mental sort of health kind of of, of why that character ended up mute <laughs> but certainly in terms of how you go about writing um it's almost more important in that situation not to put labels on it because it is purely about the experience that that character is going through and yes putting labels on it might help people understand why this character is experiencing things in certain ways but at the end of the day they're still experiencing them because that's how the character experiences the world and they probably experience the world in a very similar sort of way without the issues that are going on but these issues that are going on are just informing that experience um 
And I mean, I think, I don't want to say that I find exploring mental and emotional health more interesting necessarily than exploring physical health. I definitely think there's a lot of merit to exploring um, the different ways in which a person can become ill and um, how that can experience their experience of the world, experience their experience of the world, how that can alter their experience of the world, um, how, you know, physical limitations can alter your experience of the world. There's, you know, there's a huge amount of, to be gained from, from exploring those issues. And, and as, I, as I was saying last week, it is something I'm definitely trying to explore a lot more because it's definitely something that I'm experiencing a lot more. But at the same time, the, the mental and the emotional health is, is something I just find not necessarily more fascinating, just something that comes more naturally to me when I'm writing. And I think it is, it does come down to, to the, the, the idea that I was talking about last week of it being the individual's experience and we are nothing if not our experiences. Um, and, you know, there, there's something about the, the internal um, dialogue that each of us has that goes on inside each of our heads that to any other person could look like we were suffering from something even if we're not suffering from anything. So um, certainly dealing with those kinds of things, it's not necessarily easier. I don't think it's ever easier and it, it can be quite emotionally draining. I mean, I've, I've had to write a few scenes um, recently in, in my, my current project which were emotionally quite draining because you get to a point where you're sort of so invested in these characters and you don't want them to be going through this stuff and it's really hard having to put them through this stuff and seeing the impact it has on them and trying to deal with that aftermath in in an appropriate way so it's definitely one of those things where you just can't um you you have to sort of realize it's kind of there and and sort of deal with it as it as it comes up and, and as it happens and work out you know how is this affecting this character or why is it affecting this character in this particular way and it doesn't have to make sense and i'm, I'm saying that and a lot of you are going but it has to you know it should make sense it should it should be logical um but the thing with with mental and emotional health and um, and I think this is why I, I've kind of tackled these different to physical health is a lot of the time physical health makes sense to people. Most conditions that affect a person's physical health make sense to people. Not all. Not all. I suffer with chronic pain. Chronic pain does not make sense to a lot of people. And I know it doesn't. Um, you know, I, I haven't experienced as, as much of, of discrimination as some people with, with my conditions have experienced. But I know because I look able-bodied and because I can get on with it and, and do things, a lot of people don't think that I can be in as much pain as I am sometimes, or, you know, that I'm not necessarily faking it, but exaggerating or, you know, putting it on or whatever else, even though all I'm trying to do is just, just get on with my life. Um, I know there are a lot of people who suffer from chronic pain who do get actual, you know, I, as I said, I'm, I'm very lucky most of the people I know <laughs> completely believe me <laughs> because I'm hardworking. <laughs> well, not, not just because I'm hardworking, that, that's, that's unfair. Um, but they, they believe me because they know me and they know that I'm not putting it on and they see how it, how it impacts me, even though I'm not necessarily saying anything about them and I'm not complaining about it. I'm just getting on but it still affects me anyway um i think that's that's the kind of a thing um with certain physical health conditions that can sort of fall into the same category with, with mental and emotional health is that most physical health conditions make sense but there are some that don't and there are certainly a lot of, of mental and emotional conditions that just don't make sense to people they they don't you know there, there are plenty of people who are depressed when 
society tells them there are no reasons for them to be depressed. Um, you know, the idea that oh, it might be like there's a chemical imbalance in their brain, that, that doesn't make sense to people. Um, you know, how, how why would that make you depressed? You know, it's just it's just chemicals, it doesn't, you know, it shouldn't impact you like that, but it does and it can. Um, and you know, the the idea of of somebody suffering from anxiety um, when they do not necessarily experience any sort of high levels of stress or people who suffer from trauma from something that somebody else could just walk away from. Um, it, the, the, the idea that, you know, and again, this, this comes back to the idea that everybody's experience of the world is different. And everything will impact different people in different ways. And, but because of that, a lot of mental and emotional issues don't necessarily make 100% logical sense from an outside perspective. And as a writer, you've kind of got to both show that and show that actually, you know, if you, if you think about it a little bit more, that there's probably something there that does make sense, but sometimes it is just senseless. And this sort of very much comes down and I will... <laughs> I will use uh, one of the things that I, I learned on um, the, the most recent pain management course that I went on because chronic pain in and of itself, as, as I mentioned last time, I think I might have mentioned this time, I don't remember when I mentioned it because my memory is shockingly bad. Um, but chronic pain is something that is not just a physical thing, it is, it is a mental thing because of, of all the things that go on. And I'm not saying that we're making up the pain, we're definitely not making that pain definitely real. But the, there is a psychology to it because, you know, if you're in a lot of pain a lot of the time, it's going to have a huge impact on your mental and emotional health. And that in turn, because mental and emotional health issues impact your physical health. So it's like a vicious cycle. So chronic pain is definitely one of those conditions that, that kind of covers both the physical health and, and, and the mental and emotional health. And um, one of the things on, on the pain management course um, that we, we sort of sort of learned that you can't plan for there to be no pain. Um, that you can you can you know plan everything and you can do everything that, that you want to, you know, have everything organized the way that you want to do it. But you can't stop that pain from coming if it's going to if it's going to come. Um, so your choice is to either get on and, and, and deal with it as and when it appears, um, or just do nothing in the hopes that it will never appear. Um, and that was very much what they were sort of trying to say <laughs> in this particular course, <laughs> on, on that particular day or in that particular lesson. Um, but the way I've sort of interpreted it is it doesn't have to make sense. My pain does not have to make sense. Um, some days I will be able to do something and not experience any pain at all. And some days I will be doing the exact same task and I will be experiencing pain doing it because that's just what my body is going to do and that's just how my body is going to be. And I have to learn to, to deal with that fact and make decisions based on what my pain is doing in that moment in time. And, and that does impact, obviously, my mental health and can be quite stressed. Can be really depressing when the pain is really bad for a really long period of time and as you know my lovely viewers all three of you know um my my health has not been great this year so that has had a huge impact on on my mood and and you know uh <laughs> various other things this year but i'm i'm sort of balancing it out again now um but yeah, because I've I've kind of gone and and come away from that with this sort of very good understanding of, of something I, I feel like I already knew, which is pain does not have to make sense. Um, when you when you're living with chronic pain, it does not have to make sense, and you can't keep trying to make logical sense out of it because that's just going to you know impact everything else. And sometimes you're just going to have to accept that that pain is there because that pain is there. And I think, yes, okay, there can be a cause for mental and emotional stress and, and mental and emotional conditions, and there definitely should be research done to, to help people with those things. Sometimes those things are just going to be there because they're there. And sometimes they're not going to make sense to, to other people why they're there or 
how they've gotten, you know, to that state and then to that level that they are at. That's just how it affects that particular person at that moment in time. And that's what needs to be recognised, that that person is struggling at that moment in time. It doesn't matter how they got to that point. It doesn't matter if the journey to that point made absolutely no sense to anybody else. They're still at that point. And that's what needs to be dealt with. And that's what needs to be tackled. And I think that's very much what I try to show with my characters is that sometimes it may not make 100% sense how that character has ended up in that position, uh, mentally or emotionally, but they've ended up there. And that's what you have to deal with. And that's what you've got to work out and, and figure out. And that's the situation as it is. And that's more important than why. Yes, the why might help resolve the situation, but that's not always going to help resolve the situation. There are plenty of times where understanding how a person got to that point is not going to help them come back from that point because how they got to that point and, and what they need to get themselves back from that point are probably two completely different things. And yes, it can inform the situation, but it's not necessarily going to help the situation. So life and, and mental health and emotional health and sometimes physical health do not have to make 100% sense, but you have to deal with that. And you have to deal with that in a way that helps the person or the character to take a step back and reassess or do whatever it is they need to do in order to get them to a better place. Not necessarily kill them, not because that, that can take a long time and that, that can be different to, to different people and not everything can be cured, as I was saying last week, um, and not everything should be cured. Um, but definitely finding a way to help that person cope better with their situation or find a way of helping that person, you know, manage or just get through the night sometimes is, you know, that's that's what you have to deal with in that moment in time with your character or, you know, if, if you know someone in that sort of position with that person, how they got into that situation isn't necessarily going to help you. Whether or not the fact they're in that situation makes sense isn't going to help you. What's going to help is dealing with that person in that moment in time the way they need to be dealt with. And worrying about them in that moment in time. And yeah, I think that's very much what I try to do when I'm dealing with mental and emotional health and my characters is not worrying whether or not my readers can make sense of how this character has gotten to that point. I mean, great if they can. I, I do hope that there is, it's not like completely out of nowhere and there's no logic to it whatsoever. But it doesn't matter if something has suddenly gone from point A to, you know, point Z um, and, and the in-between doesn't necessarily make alphabetical sense. <laughs> um, because life is like that sometimes and people are like that sometimes because individuals deal with things in individual ways and my characters are individuals dealing with their situation in the way they need to deal with it. So if it makes sense, it makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense because that's life and that's health. And that is both the experience that I've had with it and the experience that people I know have had with it. And that's, I think, very much what I try to, to show. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think over these two parts, I've said some stuff that have made some sense. Um, I've said a lot of stuff that probably has made no sense. Um, I hope that I've, I've got on across at least what I'm trying to get across is that the, the thing with, with writing characters with health conditions, whether they're physical, mental or emotional, is that you're dealing with an individual's experience, not a, you know, a, a condition. You're, you're dealing with an experience. 
Um, and that's that's what I try to write, the experience, not the condition. Um, the condition can inform the experience, but it's not the experience. Um, I hope that I've not said anything that I've offended anybody too much. I do apologise if I have. I, it's really hard sometimes to know how to talk about these things because some people will, will be offended by some of the things that I've said, like even the, the idea that these things don't always make sense will offend some people. Um, and like, I do apologise for that, but, you know, I, I do deal with uh, with conditions that, that do impact the full spectrum <laughs> of, of my health. Um, so I'm trying to talk about this as somebody who kind of gets it and kind of doesn't get it at the same time um, because my experience is still my experience and that's all I can really draw from. I mean, yes, I, I've got friends and, and family that I can draw from their experiences as well, but that's still their experiences. I've still not experienced the world the way that they've experienced the world, so I can only interpret their experiences. And yeah, so so like I said, I hope I haven't said anything that has offended anybody. Um, I know these two vlogs have been kind of babbly and kind of sort of self-reflective more than I thought they would be as well um but I hope as I said that I've gotten the point that I wanted to make across um which is the the idea that people's health affect them as an individual so when writing about a character with health condition whether it's physical mental or emotional you're writing about an individual's experience and not their condition I could probably sum that up in a sentence <laughs> honestly um um okay okay next time um uh, the topic is apparently rounding out the year um i think that means self-reflecting on this year of vlogging i'm not entirely sure i will have to um i will, I will have to have some thought between now and recording it uh, as to actually what i meant by that <laughs> Because, you know, I'm so prepared with these things. Um, anyway, I hope you guys have found this one interesting and you found the last one interesting. I hope they work kind of as a two-parter, even if they didn't really focus as much as I was hoping that they would. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!